Welcome everyone to the Fall Acrylics uh, session and we're going to try to do um, work together through this fall harvest painting and um, although it has lots of details in it we're just going to work on it one section at a time so it's good for beginner painters or those who want to um, try a little more detail as well. So I'll give you some tips along the way to um, help you if you're just a beginner painter and some easier um, ways to accommodate uh, the painting if uh, you want to take things a little easier for your first try. And for those of you who are experienced painters, I hope you enjoy it and feel free to uh, do as much detail as you like. Also, I'm going to try to paint fairly quickly for the sake of recording, but um, please take your time with it and stop your, your, um, your uh, recording anytime you wish to take your time and work on sections a little bit at a time. So first of all, the materials that we're going to be using, the, the colors, we have a red cadmium, yellow cadmium, an ultramarine blue, a titanium white, and a burnt sienna. And those colors will stand you in good stead all through this painting. The, um, the other color that, if you have it in your paint box and wish to use, is yellow ochre, which uh, helps. If you have it, then you don't have to mix your yellow ochre up. Um, it's a, yellow ochre is a really good color to use in the fall. Uh, for any kind of fall painting because you see it all around us in the prairies. So there's a real prairie scene. This is what um, you experience in the late fall when you're trying to get the harvest done and the storm's coming on. Um, I wanted to show you a little bit of the process that I take to get through to this stage of a painting. So I always start with taking pictures. And I have these pictures to work from, but all of them were not exactly what I had in mind. And so I took a little bit from here and a little bit from there and put it together to make that painting. And there's some parts of photos that I ended up not using, but we still could. So I, my, my process is to take those paintings and combine them, I hope, into what's a pleasing composition. And then I kind of sketch it out uh, with pencil, just so I have an idea of where I'm going with the paint, and it gives me um, a starting point. So for us, we're going to, because we've done that groundwork, we're going to start with a fresh canvas board, and we're going to start with the yellow paint, just a nice big blob of yellow paint and um, your number six brush, the wide brush. And what I would do is I would dip that wide brush in the water and just wipe off the excess and it just dampens your brush. And uh, then your brush won't absorb as much paint. And we're going to lay in this background color and what the background color will do is it will just fill in the spaces on your board. And I'm just going to use nice sideways strokes from side to side. And I dip my brush on each side of the paint so that I can um, get lots of paint going over. And our goal here is to have a background color that will make all the colors on top harmonize. You notice I'm just going straight across, side to side. Those streaks will help us later on to create the illusion of sky or fields. And I'm leaving the top about an inch or a little better. And this corner, I'm going to leave as a space because in our painting, we put some um, purple in there to indicate that storm coming on. And the thing about yellow and purple paint is on our color wheel, they are complementary colors. And because they're complementary colors, 
when you mix them together, they'll make a lovely brownish tone, which I don't really want for my sky. So I'm trying to make sure I have a nice smooth finish and that all the little um, dents in your canvas are covered with this yellow paint. And I'm going to make sure that this is yellow kind of up over the halfway point of my canvas because we never want our horizon line to be dead center. We want it to be a little above the center line or a little below. And this may seem like a lot of yellow paint and a very bright way to start your day, but um, this is going to go give this lovely glow of fall sun to your whole painting. And any color that we put on top of this now will have that yellow undertone to it. Your canvas will be all filled in. From time to time, you may feel that your brush is a little dry. You can just dip it in the water again. To, but you don't want to dip every single stroke. You can just dip it now and again. I would say if you can hear your brush strokes, then maybe you need a little more paint or a little more uh, water on your brush to make it a little smoother. We're not really interested in having uh, thick lumps of paint here because we want to make sure that um, it will dry in good time and we're going to put lots of colors of paint on top of that. So just smooth it from side to side. If you decide to, you can choose to do the outside edges as well. Up to you entirely. So that's our first step and our first uh, base coat that we're going to work from with this painting. And that will give us a nice contrast for the sky. So the next color we're going to add is we're going to get on our palette just a little bit of red and just a little bit of white. And I'm going to continue to use that big brush, but I've just rinsed it a little bit in the water just to get some of that yellow off. And then I'm going to take my palette and without making a puddle of color, just pull a little bit of the white from there and a little bit of the red. With that, we will get a nice pinky tone. And we want this to be a bit of a peach tone. So we'll add a little yellow to it. And the yellow can go right over the edge of your, or the peach tone can go right over the edge of your yellow and still leaving that space above for um, that purple tone that we're going to bring into this painting. Now, you see how accidentally I've made some streaks there? I'm just going to leave those. Those will work nicely for clouds. And I'm just going to take this and edge out that yellow. Now I need to mix another little bit, so I'm just going to take the white again, take the red again, a little bit of yellow. That seems a little pinker than the last go, so I'm going to do it again and add a little bit more yellow. Just over on, on the side a little bit to pull it down. And if it's not quite the same, it's, it's okay, because the, the clouds colors won't be the same all the time. So just try and if you kind of lift your brush up at the end, you'll get kind of a nice feathery result. And we don't want to pull it too far down because we want to make sure we maintain that yellow. Now, um, it would be best to give that yellow a little chance to dry before we pull in the purple. So I'm going to just shut the tape off for a minute and give that a little chance to dry and then we'll do some purple. So I should uh, mention that, that while you're letting that yellow dry, it's a good chance to change your water, really rinse out all the yellow out of your um, the brush you were using because uh, the same thing, if that yellow is in your brush and you go to make a purple color, the yellow and the purple together 
will start to give you a brownish tone and we don't want to muddy our, our beautiful prairie sky. So the next color we'll be using is the ultramarine blue. Just a little bit of it. Because blue is a very strong color, it will take over everything. And we're going to mix it with the red and the white to uh, give us a mauve color. So I'm just looking and thinking, hmm, I might need a little more white, so I'll, I'll take it now so I've got it ready. So to make a nice purple color, we'll take our white. So we don't want it too strong. We can always make it stronger. It's harder to make it lighter. I've got a little bit of white on my brush. I'm going to take a little bit of the blue and just dip that same dirty brush in the red and we're going to make a, a mauve tone. So of course it depends on your proportions so you can have a more reddish tone. So red purple or you can take more blue and make a more bluey purple. Ultramarine blue has a lot of red in it to start with so it is easy to get everything a little bit on the reddish side. I'm going to start with a fairly dark tone and then lighten it up. And if I don't think it's dark enough, I'll go again. So I'm still using that big brush. If it feels too clumsy or uncomfortable for you, you can switch to a smaller brush. We're going to start in this far corner. Same thing, just light back and forth, even straight, even strokes. And I'm just pulling that color along. And I do not worry if the color changes a little bit on me, because I always think that gives us a little more depth. What, will, what you will find happens when you're painting is if you stop, you can leave um, a little white spot where you start. So always kind of wisp your brush uh, feather it up at the end and that helps to prevent those those white dots from forming on your canvas. I like the adventure of wondering what color I'll get each time I make, mix, mix this together. So sometimes it might be a little more reddish. <laughs> I hope we'll get covered up there might be a little more reddish and sometimes a little more bluish and I will pick the appropriate spot to put that color in then as I go. So a few little streaks here and there. Now as I, even though it is partially dry and it may not be quite dry on mine, as I get closer to that um, yellow and peachy color, I'm going to shift my brush. So instead of using it wide, I'm going to use it the flat way and I get a much narrower line. And that narrow line, I can feather right into that peach tone. And just lift your brush up each time. This one, I'm just going to bring it to meet it. And, but on the edges, I'll feather it along. Now, if I wanted to make this corner a little stormier, I can bring in a few more blue tones into that. Now, this is a, a color choice preference on your part because you know what colors you like and what colors you like to have in your home. So I'm going to pull this over a little bit at the bottom and when I find that my brush is a little dry for it, there's a little piece coming out there, um, I'm just going to lift the brush and blend it a little bit. And same thing, I just dipped my brush in water a little bit to soften those edges a little wee bit. So there we have 
the makings of a nice stormy sky, which we can adjust as we need to. We can make it darker, we can make it lighter. Um, you can see in the original painting, it's darker at the top, but I may leave that for now just because I kind of like this. So I'm going to leave it at, at, at that point, um, making that color choice. Now, next we're going to add in some perspective into our painting. Um, so we're going to just um, take a little piece of charcoal and we're going to add in the hills. It's a nice tool for that, but I didn't bring it with me today. Okay, so the first thing is about, about a third of the way up your canvas. Take your charcoal and just draw yourself a nice curving line that goes more than halfway across your page. And then on the other side, take yourself a nice curving line, so I'm going to start where my clouds end, and I'm going to, it's not quite as high as this side, and I'm going to take a nice curving line here. This one I'm going to bring further across the page. So that's our, our, our second hill. This is our more distant hill. We're creating aerial perspective here with our hills. Now, because of those original photographs that I was working from, one of the fields was had a lot of curved lines on it, which I really liked. And that is actually from the Holland area, that picture. Um, but in order to achieve that, I'm going to add two more lines in to make hills, uh, the hills undulate as we go along. You don't need to do that. You could just leave this as one solid field, but um, it's up to you. But I just think it's a little more fun. So I'm going to start here at this corner. I'm going to bring it down. The farthest field will be the smallest piece of our little pie here. A nice curve down. I'm going to start at this corner again and bring a second curved line. And I could start maybe a little, little bit further down. Second curved line it gives us another hill here. And now we have our faraway field, our nearby field, and we'll continue to build up the foreground so that we can give nice perspective to this painting. Now we're going to switch to a smaller brush. I, I have a round brush here, and I, it's about a number three, I think. And I have a smaller brush here, or a script liner would be good as well. I'm going to start with the, the round brush, though, because mine has a nice point on it. So um, take good care of your brushes when you have paint brushes. You can shape that point, and you can get a nice point, and it gives you a little um, extra bit of line to work with. And now we're going to um, take our blue color and we're going to make a, a nice green. So I'm taking a little bit of blue and I'm stealing a little bit of that yellow and it makes quite a dark green color. And um, I was just, I'm going to use the paint a little bit thinner, so a little bit more water to it. Because if I use thinner paint, the yellow will show through a little bit. And the yellow showing through will help to give us that uh, illusion of um, that the sun is showing through these hills. So using your charcoal line as your base, just make little round bumps on your canvas. And I'm going to keep the bottom of that line straight, but the top of that line is going to be raised, and that top line raised is going to give us the illusion of trees off in the distance. Now, charcoal dissolves in water, 
charcoal will automatically make your paint a little darker. But remember, if your paint is too thin, if it's mostly water, when that water evaporates and dries, it will not probably look dark enough. So we're going to take a little more yellow and a little more blue. And if you find that it needs a little deepening tone, the quickest way to do that is to add a little red. I'll show you here. When you add red to the blue, it makes purple, and purple and yellow together make a brown. So it will darken that tone. And it all doesn't have to be the same color. Keep the bottom line, the bottom of your line <laughs> straight. This might be a bigger bluff because I made a little bump on it. <laughs> but these are the farthest away trees that we have. So these trees are uh, definitely smallest, the smallest on our page, on our canvas. So we want them off in the distance. I'm going to take that all the way down to here, to this joint. And these little tiny trees are just showing us how far away that very back field really is. I have to smooth out my lump there. And then, on the other side, so that, that color can be a dark greenish color with lots of blue in it. It can have some red tones. But don't feel like you have to make it a really dark line. That can be wispy. The yellow can show through. Um, now we're going to start over on this side. And we're going to take that same blue and yellow. But we're going to mix it a little stronger. So we're not going to put as much water with it. And just make it a kind of a darker tone. I think I want to have it not look too green because it is fall. So I'm going to add a little bit more red to it to give it more of a purple tone. And these trees are going to be just that much bigger. So I'm going to start same brush. I'm still using that little round brush. And I'm going to make bigger trees. So for all you tidy people out there, and you know who you are, and don't, don't make all your trees the same height because things don't grow like that in nature. The bottom of your, of your tree line is still flat because our hill is rounding up. And so really this is hill we're seeing, not necessarily the bottom of those trees. So that's why we wanted to have a nice smooth roundness on the bottom. Um, but we're gonna just round it up at the top. And I'm not gonna put trees right here. This is where our track, our combine is going to sit and I want to have a fairly good amount of yellow that can show through. So I'm actually going to end these trees a little quicker. And that gives me more yellow to work with. So there you have your second row of trees. Um, so that um, gets you started on getting, building up your aerial perspective. We can make sure these trees are a little bigger than these trees, and that will help us with that. And, when the, and really, the last thing we're going to do with this, on this stage of the picture, is we're just going to put a sun in. So I'm going to take my pinky, and I'm going to go into my white paint, and we don't want our sun to be right dead in the center. We know we're going to put a combine here. So that's part of the flow of this picture. This line's leading to your combine. This line's leading to your combine. But we do want to highlight that the sun is going down. So I put my into straight white paint. I've got my pinky covered. And the sun is going down, but it's still really bright and brilliant. So it's showing white. I'm just making a nice little circle. Don't worry if the paint's not too thick and some yellow comes through. That'll just help it too. The reason I use my finger is because it's way easier to try and get a nice circle with your pinky than with anything else. And that is your first stage of your picture and all your background. Have fun this week getting your background set. You can certainly tinker with it. 
all you need to if you decide you want to tinker more with those sky colors you can do that by um, adding in little where you see little details I just put a little bit of white in that mold on the brush you can emphasize those details a little more if you wish but um, the main thing is to get all your canvas covered get that yellow base on let that dry for a little bit and then we'll uh, go on to the next stage thanks